Thank you so much. And I am uh, so excited to be celebrating the second anniversary of my 40th birthday today with you all. <laughs> so I want to tell you a little bit of a story. And it starts on August 29th, 2015, where thousands of CBRE executives and professionals and clients were gathered at the Denver, Colorado Convention Center for our biannual America Summit. And there was an excitement in the air because our leaders were presenting their vision for our digital transformation journey. Now, they introduced more mundane things like access to cloud storage and upgrades to our email system. And then they introduced Dimension. Dimension is CBRE's internal name for the Esri platform. And it was flashy, and it was animated, and it was cool, and I totally didn't get it. Because see, in my world, maps were a pretty standard deliverable for basic necessary information. In commercial real estate, knowing where things are at a lat long level is just table stakes. And boy, we were good at the table. We produced hundreds of thousands of maps each year with hundreds of dots and logos and call-out boxes. They're strewn across conference room tables, hanging on the walls, all in the pursuit of better informing our clients' real estate decisions. So while the idea of interactive maps was interesting, it certainly was not groundbreaking, paradigm-shifting technology that was going to fuel a revolution. Fast forward, or no, looking back to 2015, that was a hallmark year for commercial real estate technology. Now, commercial real estate has always been a pretty conventional sector of the economy. But in 2015, venture capitalists began to invest heavily in technology that would have an impact on our industry and bring us into the 21st century. From augmented and virtual reality to real-time 3D modeling, 2015 was the year we started to think a little differently about how we engaged our clients. And CBRE was determined to lead the way in this space with strategic investments that would impact all lines of business. We would go on to acquire Floored Inc., which is a scalable, interactive 3D graphic technology. And we would go on to create CBRE Host, which connects our clients to community, amenities, and their built environment. But all of that's in the future. Back in 2015, what we had was what I heard called PowerPoint on steroids, fancy PowerPoints with interactive maps. And I did not get what all the fuss was about. So we're gonna fast forward a little. Now it's 2017, and they have asked me to lead our GIS team in bringing dimension at an enterprise level across the Americas. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret I didn't even know what GIS stood for. I had to Google it. Got off the phone, Googled, what am I now leading, okay? <laughs> now they want me to be the one to convince our professionals and our clients that this technology is gonna change the world. Okay, so I gather the GIS team. I said, all right, show me what this dimension can do. They brought out the beta of what would become our commute optimizer tool, and phew, mine blown. Because this was not a fancy PowerPoint, nor was it an alternative to 15 maps on a conference room table. This was gonna fundamentally change the way our professionals advise their clients on their relocation decisions. Let me show you what I mean. So imagine with me. You are now in charge of finding a new office location for your organization. What do you think is the first thing your employees are going to wonder about that new location, besides how close it is to the nearest coffee shop? <laughs> They're going to wonder how it impacts their commute. The average American commutes 27 minutes one way every day. And in a large city, it may be double or even triple that. 
So knowing the drive time impact on your workforce's commute is critical. Now in the past, it would have taken an entire book of maps, just like he talked about that stack of maps, a whole book of maps to tell this one story. There'd be a map for the current location, a map for the alternate location, a map for the C-suite, for key employees to retain, for the competitor's locations, two or three options would generate a plethora of maps. And there's still a chance that in the meeting, the client might ask a question you weren't prepared for. Guess what that means? Back to the office, make some more maps. The commute optimizer changes all of that. Now, all of that information can be put on the screen and showcased in real time. All a client has to do is provide a list of synonymized employee addresses. We load them into our Dimension application, and we can see the average commute time and costs for their workforce. We can even add a location right there on the fly by clicking the Add a Location button and then clicking on the map, or by typing in an address and searching for it that way. What I love the most about this tool is that we can see what the impact would be for groups of employees. So if you want to filter by business unit or title or department, you can see how your decision is going to affect people. And you can review an impact assessment to see if overall any one choice has more of a positive or, ne or negative impact on your workforce. Now. As someone who had been involved with creating all of those maps in the past, I immediately saw the opportunity here. This was smart technology. It was going to allow us to do things in real time that would have real impact for our clients. And it begged the question, what other types of data could we display in Dimension? Chandra Dandapani, our Chief Digital and Technology Officer, describes CBRE's differentiation as living at the intersection of technology and real estate service. As the largest commercial real estate firm in the world, our access to data is unparalleled. Not only can we leverage third-party data sets, we also have real-time property and market information from professionals across the globe. Our perspective, scale, and connections, and the resulting outcomes are the advantage that CBRE brings. So Dimension wasn't just a new shiny tech toy, nor was it a bunch of dots and maps. This could be the key to that digital transformation journey. But first, we had to start thinking outside of the box, or should I say, outside of the dot. Because as I mentioned, dots on a map are just table stakes. We had to make a shift from thinking about mapping to thinking about location intelligence. It's not enough to just know where things are. It's about the data and analysis and the consultation of what's happening around those points in space we had to learn to weave a location story for our clients. And I'll be honest, this was not an easy sell for our professionals who had been doing business the same way for years and years until they put Dimension in front of clients and saw how it changed the conversation. The best thing about it is that it was applicable to all lines of business. So the commute optimizer was a game changer for office, but location intelligence can have great implications for retail and industrial. For example, we had a client that was a plastic and paper goods distributor for the food and grocery industry. They were seeing massive growth on the horizon, and it required them to rethink their real estate strategy and portfolio. They had two locations, one in Greensboro, which was a large distribution facility and an overflow facility nearby. Now, both of these facilities served the Greensboro and the Charlotte area. With rising transportation costs, demand and growth growing in Charlotte, and leases expiring in 12 months, they had some decisions to make. Do they remain status quo? Should they open a third facility in Charlotte? 
Maybe they close one in Greensboro and open a larger facility in Charlotte. Or maybe they just shut them both down, split the difference, and open a massive facility somewhere in between. Trying to evaluate each of these scenarios has a huge impact on their bottom line and their business, and Dimension was the perfect tool to help with that. We were able to bring in the client's data, along with data about amenities, population growth, access to transportation, access to labor, warehouse labor, as well as crime indexes, and evaluate each option individually to see what the impact would be on their business. This, along with our professionals' market knowledge, allowed us to have a real conversation about their long-term implications on their bottom line. Ultimately, we recommended scenario C. Close the smaller facility, leverage the existing landlord relationship on the larger facility, and open a right-sized facility in Charlotte. This is the art and science of commercial real estate site selection. This is digital transformation at its best. You're impressed, right? But wait, there's more. In retail, all right, everybody knows retail. In retail, which is arguably one of the fastest growing uh, property types in our business, our clients have a voracious need for data, as the folks from Kohler were talking about. Those data points can have a massive impact on their overall growth in business. Hill Country Galleria is an upscale outdoor shopping center about 15 miles west of Austin, Texas. Now, in spite of its beauty and its high-end retailers, the property was struggling. It was only about 70% leased, which is pretty low for a property of this stature. Furthermore, we weren't entirely sure who the customer was and where they were coming from. We knew we needed a new leasing and management strategy. And again, dimension to the rescue, perfect place to get those insights. So the first thing we needed to do was to better define the trade area. So a trade area are the geographic boundaries of where we think our main customer base is coming from. In the past, this has definitely been more art than science. Our professionals take their local market knowledge, they study three, five, 10 mile drive times, and they create a polygon. Now, conventional wisdom said Austinites probably weren't driving this far west when there were other similar options closer by. And the area further to the west wasn't yet really developed. But when we ran the study in Dimension, we learned we were way off. In fact, Austinites, suburban Austinites, were traveling to Hill Country Galleria. And we had more people coming from the West than we ever imagined. Now, this fueled kind of a shift in our strategy. First of all, the population in suburban Austin was growing much faster than the population to the West. There weren't a lot of large housing developments there yet. And then secondly, the people in suburban Austin were different than what we first assumed. They were more diverse, they were more willing to commute, and they were more interested in experiences the entire family could enjoy, including, and this was important, their pets. So we created an experience strategy, one that would bring energy and excitement to the center. We started handing out branded towels for the pop jet fountains so the kiddos could dry off while mom and dad continued their shopping excursion. We installed, and I promise you I didn't even know this was a thing, air-conditioned dog houses, <laughs> complete with security cameras and water bowls so that you could bring your pup with you on a Saturday afternoon. We started hosting concerts and yoga classes on the lawn and we brought in local and national pop-up retailers, some of whom turned into longer-term leases. Nine months later, we ran that study again and learned we achieved remarkable outcomes. First, the center went from 70 to 90% leased in nine months. That's a record turnaround. Secondly, and perhaps more importantly, the dwell time, which is the amount of time people spend on property, increased from 97 minutes to 135 minutes, which is just exemplary. 
We checked Yelp, and it looks like our customers were just as excited about the changes as we were. They felt like the center really understood them, had become an important part of the community, and knew what they needed. This was a win-win for everyone. Now, these are just a couple of examples of how we're leveraging the power of GIS, our shift from mapping to location intelligence, to change the way we do our advisory service. Now, make mo no mistake, just like we heard this morning, this is a very complicated and fast-moving space. It's requiring constant evolution. I work very closely with CBRE's global data and privacy team to make sure that any applications we're building are respecting privacy and earning the trust of our clients, our employees, and anyone whose personal data we might steward. But with a clear vision and strategy and our world-class Esri technology, we are able to advise our clients in ways we never could before. And they're able to take actionable steps which have immediate impact on their business. At CBRE, we are aspiring to be world-class. And what that means for us is that we're able to be the undisputed leader in providing outcomes our clients couldn't get with any of our competitors. I was in Dallas a couple of months ago, and I caught an Uber to the office. And I promise you, this is a true story. This hand. True story, all right? I'm in, the I'm in the Uber, and I'm talking to the guy, and he's a retail asset manager in his uh, previous life. And so he knew CBRE well, and we actually knew some of the same people, and we're just chatting it up. And he goes, what are you guys doing over there? So well, what do you mean? He said, oh, I had a guy in the back of my car a couple weeks ago. I guess he was new to the company, but he's on the phone. He's going on and on about how amazing your tech tools are and how they're going to change the way he does business. He can't wait to get his hands on them. No one else has them. What in the world did you guys build? I learned two things that day. One, be careful what you say in the back of an Uber. Because <laughs> Robert, the Uber driver, is listening and he remembers. And two, while the viral communication of our digital transformation journey might not be the number one measurement of success, in my humble opinion, it's certainly a sign that we're on the right track. Thank you.